Mrs. Reagan, millions of words have been written about you and your husband, so many words that uh, we won't go into all of them. But we thought we'd give you an opportunity to respond to some of the short quotes that have been written about you personally. For instance, tightly controlled and cautious. How do you react to that? I suppose I'm cautious. I don't know how tightly controlled I am, but I'm cautious, yes. All right. The next one, marathon smiler. No, not all the time. <laughs> it's hard to smile all the time. Yeah. But I think when, when you're out in public, do you try to smile or is it just your nature? No, I, I like people and, and people, are, people are very nice. Mm -hmm. And so you respond. Exactly. All right, maintains a rapt look of adoration as Reagan gives a speech. Now you've, you've yes, read I've that. I've heard that over and yes. over and over again. And I, I never quite understood if they thought that it would be better if I sat and looked right straight out forward and counted the house or something, you know, rather than look at my husband. Actually, I would look at anybody who's speaking. If they checked me, they would see that I look at anybody who's speaking. I think it's impolite if you don't. Um, I can't really digest what they're saying unless I look at somebody. All right, she has strong views. Yes, I do. What do you have the strongest views about? What, are, what, do you, what is your greatest concern for this country? Oh, you, that's so a many. That's, that's a, a big, big question. One. We'll pick yes, a couple. Yes, but I, I have strong views about, about uh, what's happened to the whole family unit in the, in the country, um, the morals of the country. Um, well, I'm now picking things at red. All right, but that, that's enough. Uh, favors equal pay for women. Equal pay for women? Absolutely. Okay. Opposes passage of ERA. I'd rather see it done by statute. Adamantly against abortion. I am against abortion. I, I can't get over the fact that, I, in my opinion, you're, you're killing somebody. Strongly believes in sanctity of home and family, which is I which do. is what you said. <laughs> but going along with that, there was an article that just came out this week in a, a publication called The Economist, and it said, uh, "Patty, your daughter, 27, a drama student whose earlier live-in arrangement with a member of the Eagles rock group embarrassed her parents. How did you and your husband deal with that?" Well, now you know something. I'm not going to answer you, and I'll tell you why. Um, I think that um, children of well-known parents have a very difficult time, and all children go through difficult times. Um, and I think they should be allowed to go through those difficult times and come out of those difficult times uh, with the least attention paid to that as possible. But with understanding from parents. Of course. Because Betty Ford addressed herself to that. That's, uh, everybody has their own way. That's up to Betty Ford, mm -hmm. are you saying? All right, we'll go on. Uh, instrumental in sacking the former campaign manager, John Sears. No. The brains behind her husband. You've, no. read, the, you've read that. No, <laughs> my husband is the, is the brains of the family. <laughs> As a matter of fact, in your book, you say that marriage is, uh, sometimes people think it's 50-50, but in many cases, sometimes it's 75-25, 90-10. You bet. When has it been 90-10 at your house? Oh, lots of times. Uh, and, and reverses. Sometimes I'm the, I give the 90, and sometimes he gives the 90. But we have to be ready for that. And you have to want to do it, too. <laughs> right. Determined. Would that describe well, you? That depends on, on, what, on what you're talking about. Um, I try, uh, for instance, uh, I, I, I try to um, do what I think is right for my family and my children. Um, if that's determined, then... Well, depending upon the cause, yeah. you are determined. Yeah. We're talking to Mrs. Ronald Reagan, and we have just two more quotes here. Would you be a forceful first lady, in your opinion? Oh, I, depends on what you mean by forceful. Uh, for, I'd be for myself. The things, yes, for the things that you believe in. For instance, what would be, so everybody, I'm sure, asks you, what are going to be your pet causes? What are you most interested in? I know you visit many, many hospitals. You visit many schools. You have great concern. Well, my, I'm very interested in a, in a program called the Foster Grandparent Program and, um, and have since, I mean, I've continued my interest in that since Sacramento and will continue it.
I'd like to, I'd like to see more of it. And, and for people that don't understand that, I wonder if you could explain it just a little bit. Well, it's a program that involves both the elderly and the, and the young and the children. I've always believed that most programs only involve benefit one side. And I think that we tend to forget about the elderly uh, who have a great deal to give and are at a time in their lives when they feel unwanted and unneeded and unloved. And uh, the children, on the other hand, need a great deal of attention more than any and love more than any uh, hospital can guarantee them. And you bring these two together, and each gives to the other what the other needs, and it's wonderful to see what happens. That's foster grandparenthood. <laughs> All right, Nancy is tough, more than ad an adoring wife. Now, I think that was a Sun-Times reporter that said that. Or maybe it was from the US News and World Report. Well, I don't think I'm tough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Nola of Chicago called in and said, if your husband is elected, is he going to cut welfare? He's going to try to control welfare. He wants welfare brought back to the states rather than administered from Washington, which is what uh, uh, he, he proposed in California. And he did, and he did uh, control it in California, cut the so-called cheaters off of welfare, uh, gave the people who truly deserved more help more help, and the ones who were uh, able-bodied and, and able to uh, they work for their money. Debbie of uh, Fox River Grove, what do you think of the Love Canal situation? And how would you advise your husband in that situation, uh, considering that President Carter seems to avoid it? I'm afraid, I, I hate to say this, but I'm afraid I don't know enough about that to answer that question. Well, it was a, a large company that was dumping uh, dangerous chemicals into um, an area right near a, um, it's in the Niagara Falls area. Mm -hmm. And those, those people were endangered by this big company dumping, dumping all these dangerous chemicals. Well, I don't think I'd have to advise my husband. I'm sure he would do it. He'd take care fine. of it himself. Yeah. All right, John of Chicago. Uh, word has been spread that you are anti-Semitic. What are you doing about these rumors? Well, <laughs> well my husband got the highest uh, award that you can get from Israel which would hardly be given to anybody who was anti-Semitic. But I'll just tell you a brief little story about him when he was in pictures. He belonged to a country club called the Lakeside Country Club. I'm not sure that it still exists. And he found out that uh, uh, Jews were not permitted. And he resigned because of that. And they put his card up on the, on the uh, wall of the locker room and used to throw darts at it. Uh, we have a, a country club in California called Hillcrest Country Club, which is just a Jewish country club, and they gave him an honorary card. I would hardly call him anti-Semitic. <laughs> in your book, you also mentioned that the hardest thing for you is when you read or hear criticism of your husband. You'd rather be criticized yourself than to have someone criticizing him. True. How do you deal with this other than taking a, a bubble a bath? bath? <laughs> yes, 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 and having long conversations and telling all these people off <laughs> in the, while, while you're in just, the bathtub right. <laughs> where nobody can hear me. <laughs> We're ta talking to Mrs. Ronald Reagan and Margaret of Niles. How did your husband and you feel about the blacklisting era in Hollywood? Well, I think there's been a lot of misunderstanding about the blacklisting. There was blacklisting on, uh, on uh, they don't talk about it much, but there was blacklisting on the other side. Um, if you were anti-communist, you were blacklisted also. Um, my husband was, was president of the guild at the time that the communists called a strike and tried to take over the business. And uh, it was a very bitter, bitter strike with trucks being overturned and set on fire. He had a threat that they would throw acid in his face if he continued his position. And um, one of the actors who had joined the Communist Party uh, in testimony afterwards said, we ran into a one-man battalion called Ronald Reagan. So it, there, there's a lot of rewriting of history going on right now with that. But there was certainly definitely an infiltration or an attempt at that time. By the, by communists, the communists to take over the, yes. Right. Uh, let's go on to another question, Mark of Calumet Park. Would you comment on Joan Kennedy's remark about Mrs. Carter saying that she is unsophisticated as a first lady? Well, I thought it was an unfortunate remark. Mm -hmm. 
What do you think the role of the First Lady should be, and how would you fill it? Everybody has their own way of, of doing that, and everybody's different. Um, I would do it uh, my way. <laughs> uh, another question came in asking about your children. Uh, well, we have four children. Uh, we have uh, two older children, uh, Maureen and Mike. Uh, Maureen is, uh, they're all grown, obviously. Um, Maureen is now, Maureen's been married a couple of times, and um, she now is uh, connected with the magazine. Michael is married and has a son. Cameron, who's two years old, and he's in the Gasa Hall business. Um, Patty is uh, living with us and uh, trying to find an apartment, which is very hard to do in, in Los Angeles, and is an actress and also writes songs. And our son Ron is in New York and wants to be another Barishnikov. We have very, very uh, completely different children, which is marvelous. Mark of Chicago, how do you, you, how do you and your husband support gay rights legislation, or do you? Do you and your husband support gay rights legislation? I don't know how to answer that, because I, what, what legislation are, are, is he referring to? Well, it's a call that came in, so we just have to take it as maybe an ambiguous question. Uh, well, I, 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 don't, I don't know what, what, you know, I think, I'd have to know more specifically what he's talking about. Absolutely. What, what is your main concern at this point? We talked about the country and we talked about the blacklisting in Hollywood, but does the Soviet, do the Soviets worry you seriously? Do you think that, that the country is not as concerned as they should be? Oh, the country is <laughs> very much concerned. You get out of the big cities and, and into the country as, as we have, you bet they're concerned, and rightly so. Thank you very much for being our guest, and we hope you'll come back again. Wow. And we hope that you have a very pleasant weekend. Good afternoon.